Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about Wiccan statues and how you use them. But before we do, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. And if you want to do just that, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you want to know where to start your witchcraft practice, but you're not sure, do have a look at my free video, How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice. The link is in the description field below this video. Statues and idols have been associated with paganism for a long time and some religions that I won't name have a real problem with it. They think that what pagans do is worship the actual statues themselves or the idols themselves. Now I don't really know what people did back in the day but I know in this day and age we know that some a piece of wood or resin that's been carved into an image of something is not something that we actually worship. In fact pagans, modern pagans anyway, don't actually worship our deities. We work with them. We don't use them. We work with them. They don't need to be worshipped. And the statue is a way, it's a tool. It's a tool of being able to work with them that for some people makes it easier or just more pleasant. Now you don't need statues to work with deities, obviously. Everything is energy and consciousness, so you don't need a thing other than yourself to be able to work any of the magical or spiritual things. But tools, as you find in many religions, particularly pagan religions, there's a lot of tools. And these tools all play a role in helping us connect to who we are, projecting energy, containing energy, and helping us remember ourselves, remember what we're doing here and to connect with our divine selves. So first thing that a statue can do to help you in your practice is it can help you connect. If you're struggling with connecting to a deity because it's not easy for you to connect more energetically or abstractly at this point. Sometimes having a physical symbol of the deity will help that connection. We humans are social beings and we're used to connecting to other people and things. And our ego particularly is used to connecting with things. And so a statue can be a little bit like a, a telephone or a connection device that just helps us psychologically be able to connect with the deity or to be able to visualize the deity there with us. And I know some people don't necessarily need to do that or all of us may not necessarily need to do that, but it is a kind of a nice way to, to connect, to connect through that image. A lot of statues also have other symbols on them as well that are associated with the deity. So you've got that connection to a lot of the aspects of the deity and what the deity symbols on that symbolizes on that subconscious level as well. The statue can also be an energy container. So if you're working with a deity over a long period of time, if you're invoking them, if you're doing mantra or doing chants with a deity over a long period of time, the energy that you're putting out and the energy that they're bringing in gets contained within the statue as well. So from a vibrational point of view, knowing that everything vibrates, including inanimate objects like statues, it takes on the vibration of your intention and the vibration of the deity that you're working with too. So it does actually contain an aspect of the deity and you too. So it, in some ways it is alive and it is energetically alive in some way. I think though for most of us, the main important thing is with the statue itself is that psychological help that it can give us. Whenever we see the statue, whether you're just walking past it or you just happen to glance at it, it's a reminder of not just the deity, it's a reminder of you and your path. It's a reminder of what you're doing. It's a reminder of your divinity. It's a reminder of the, the hopes that you have and the, what you're doing with your path, why you've got this practice and how it's important to you. It reminds you of your path. What is your path? What is your purpose? What is your work here in the world? It helps you connect to your spirituality, to connect to nature, to connect to the divine, to connect to magic. 
And all of that is happening on a psychological level, subconsciously, without you even knowing that it's happening. Which is what the beauty of it in, in many ways is that it's working for you in a positive way without you necessarily having to think about it because you've set up this connection with it. So it's all subconsciously running in the background. The statue is also like a mirror. It's a mirror to you because for some reason you want to work with that deity as much as they may want to work with you. It's a mirror of yourself on an ego level because our ego becomes attached to objects. Because the ego can't see itself and we can't see ourselves without a mirror, we look to other objects as reflections of ourselves. And that means every object that we're attracted to is somehow the ego's way of identifying it with itself or are you identifying that somehow with yourself? Like, I like that, I want that. <laughs> Or if we have an aversion to something, it's the ego's way of saying, that's not me. I don't want that. Uh, that's not what I want for whatever reason. And so a statue kind of acts like an attraction for the ego too, to get the ego on board with your desire to do your spiritual path. And that deity also has aspects that you may also have within yourself or that you may want to develop within yourself that you are reminded of when you see the deity on that subconscious level too. So as you can see, statues have a huge role to play in our practice if we wish to have them included in our practice. They are a very valuable tool as long as you know that these are the, these, these are the things it's doing and this is the purpose that the statue has. We're not worshipping it. We're not worshipping a lump of carved wood or resin or actually working with something that has been enlivened by the work that we do with it and how it is affecting us vibrationally on that psychological level and energetic level as well. Let me know in the comments field how you work with statues, which statues maybe you have and how you like to work with them. The way that I do like to work with them is just to have them there in front of me. And when I'm invoking a deity, Often I won't even look at the statue. I'll just see that the deity is actually in front of me more in an energetic sense. Often they're in full uh, form as if they were actually a person in front of me. I don't actually see them in the statue, but what I find happens is that because it's present and it's, it's connected to them, uh, it does actually then resonate with them when I'm not actually doing the, the invocation. So that's one way of working with them is just having the statue there in front of you, even if you're visualizing the deity being there in front of you in a more energetic situation. Or you can just see that the deity may be coming into the statue and being there while you're working with the deity and then maybe it, the deity leaves and just leaves a little bit of resonance there for you. We don't uh, trap deities into statues like some uh, some forms of witchcraft and magic you would have a container where you would could trap a spirit we don't do that with deities of course but there, there is an energy that's often residual energy that can be there so there are different ways that you can work with your statue see it for all of the things that it can do for you and see it as a way of connecting to your deity, particularly if you have trouble connecting in a more of an abstract sort of sense at the beginning. If you want to learn Wicca with me, I do have the Mystery Witch School 101 Academy where you do learn to connect with the deities and you do learn to work with various different deities. You also learn how to work on your own self and craft yourself a spiritual path that brings in more of who you truly are but more of that sense of practicing the craft rather than just knowing, okay, yes, I know the form, I know there's Sabbaths and there's lunar rites and there's this and there's that, but what do I actually do with it? How does that help me connect to my path? Well, the form isn't actually the thing. The form, the Sabbaths and that are a form. What's in the Sabbaths and what the essence is in, in, within the Sabbath and how you can connect with the deities within that 
is really what gives you that connection. It's not actually the form itself. So when I'm teaching Wicca, I'm trying to teach more about how you can use the form to be able to get to the essence. It's like having a cup and you think that the cup is the thing, but the cup actually contains the thing that's actually really important. So if you're wanting to have a drink of water, there's no point having an empty cup. It's not going to help you. You have to fill the cup with the water. But if you're being transfixed with the cup and, the think that, and you think the cup is the water, then you're probably never going to actually get to drink from what's actually in the cup, if that makes sense. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be.